Got Questions podcast. On today's episode, I have with me Dr. Timothy Yoder. He's an associate professor of theology at Dallas Theological Seminary. And I've, I'm a student there and I've had numerous classes with Dr. Yoder. And one of the most meaningful was a class called God and Evil, where we discuss the problem of evil, the question of why does God allow evil? So that's our topic for today. Um, I think Dr. Yoder has some excellent insights on that. So Dr. Yoder, um, welcome to the program. Well, thank you, Shay. It's a it's a pleasure to be here with you. I, uh, you're right. This is a, a really important topic, and I'm glad to uh, to share some thoughts with you. So, Dr. Yoder, uh, this is a uh, something that's been debated about since he, before Christianity began. Um, Christians have been discussing it, proposing solutions for nearly two thousand years. So, um, solve it for us. Um, why does God allow evil? Well, that's a good question, and I wish I could. I could. I wish I could completely solve it. I don't think there is a a a silver bullet or a magic bullet or anything like that 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 we can say that resolves everything all at once. But I do think that there are some important observations, uh, insights, reflections that that we can uh, make and think about and reflect on that will help us to um, to maintain our faith. The goal is to. Uh, um, Think about some things. I identify some things that that can restore or strengthen or maintain our faith in a good God, in spite of the evil that we see. So, if I were to st- attempt to summarize it, if if God is um, all powerful, um, He could prevent evil. If God is all good, He would want to prevent evil. So, if the Bible teaches that God is all powerful and all good, why is there evil? I think that's um, probably about as simple summary as you can get. So um, what are some of the solutions that you've heard over the years that you attempt to address this and which do you think are the strongest and why? Okay. Very good. Very good. So you, you're actually um, almost citing word for word uh, the great philosopher Epicurus, who was a, uh, a Greek philosopher about 25 years ago, not a Christian. He lived before the time of Christ. He was a contemporary of Aristotle. And he he articulated just what you were saying about about this this issue, and and his thoughts usually are uh, paraphrased or or condensed into three statements: uh, God is all good, God is all powerful, and evil exists. And and we as Christians we believe all of those statements. We believe that that God is good, that He is that He is great, that He is loving and merciful and just, uh, and and. And so we believe in a good, good God, and we believe in an all-powerful God. We believe that God um, made everything, and he exists uh, on his own, and he is eternal, and and there's nothing higher than God. Anselm said, God is that in which nothing greater can be conceived. And so we believe in an all-powerful God, and we believe that that evil exists. I mean, we live in an era of coronavirus and of uh, cancer and of mass shootings and hurricanes and earthquakes and, um, you know, extreme weather and cancer and all kinds of things. We live in a world that is, that is fallen. It's not the way it should be. And so we, as Christians, we, we clearly affirm these three statements. God is all good. God is all powerful and evil exists. And we mean, in this case, we, we're talking about evil in the sense of suffering, we will also talk about evil in the sense of sin. That's a little down the road, but the the, the, uh, the philosophers like Epicurus think of it in terms of suffering. But but here's what here's the here's the rub, as we as we might say, those three statements seem to be in tension with each other. And this is this goes back to your original question: If God really is all good and all powerful, well, why doesn't He just get rid of evil? And um, and that's a really good question. It's a fair question, and we should we should welcome hard questions uh, so that we can try to answer them. An Epicurus question is a is a fair question. Why does God allow evil in the world? Um, the skeptics think that that because there is evil in the world, that means that God, at least some of the skeptics, that means that God doesn't exist. So so contemporary people like Richard Dawkins or um, well or Bertrand Russell, who lived in the 20th century, and Sigmund Freud, another 20th century thinker. Some of these atheists believe that evil and God are mutually exclusive. If you've got evil in the world, then there is no God. Um, and if we have God, then there shouldn't be any evil. And they think it's it's one or the other. 
you can't have, you know, uh, and so we, we clearly have evil. So therefore there must not be a God. This is, this is the boldest conclusion from the skeptics saying that there, that there is no God. Um, and on the, on the basis of the problem of evil. And so this is one of the most important apologetic challenges. Now you asked me if I could, um, you know, what can we say in response? How, how can we respond? Do we just throw up our hands and say, well, okay, I guess there is no God. No, I don't think so. Um, Alvin Plantiga, who is one of the great Christian philosophers and, and, um, uh, Shay, I know that you've you've read uh, Plantiga, and uh, we've talked about him in my classes. Yeah, He's not you, an easy you philosopher. You made me read it. Yes. I, I did make yeah. you read it. Yes, yeah. I did. And uh, um, so I, I'm 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 a meanie in that regard, that's for sure. <laughs> but he's a he's a he's a good philosopher. He's very hard. Um, and uh, his little book, God, Freedom, and Evil, is not an easy read, but it's worth the time and effort. But in in that book, uh, Plantiga makes a really interesting um, observation. Uh, he says we've got these we've got these three statements right God is all good God is all powerful evil exists and the skeptics say these three don't really go together they create this tension but planning says what if we added a fourth statement a fourth thought and what if that fourth thought was God can use evil to bring about the good and if that's true then that really diffuses the tension at least in the most extreme way, it, if, if God can use the evil to bring about his purposes, then God and evil are not mutually exclusive. And it takes the sting out of this really bold conclusion that there is no God, right? And Plantinga says this notion that God can use evil to bring about his purposes, um, first of all, it makes, it makes some sense because God is, God is above all. And so if there's evil in the world, it's not as if God and evil are at war and one, you know, they're, they're duking it out. Who's going to win? No, God is over everything. And so, so if God can use evil to bring about his purposes, that makes sense what, from what we know about the God, nature of God. And you might say, okay, well, are there any examples of this? Well, there's one really important one, and it's what happened, um, you know, on that first Good Friday, right, when Jesus was crucified. Uh, that was that was an act of evil. It was unjust. It was wrong. He didn't deserve to die. He didn't deserve to be crucified. He didn't deserve to be to be tortured and uh, and and whipped and uh, and mocked in in all the ways that he was. It was wrong. I remember as a little boy thinking that we shouldn't call it Good Friday. We should call it Bad Friday because it was a really bad thing. Um, but we call it Good Friday because this amazing blessing came from it, right? salvation, atonement, these these uh, tremendous theological truths. Jesus took our sin upon himself and died for it to propitiate the Father so that we can be saved and that we can be reconciled to him. And so so here's a, a classic and, and, and essential uh, example of this truth. God can use bad things to bring about his purposes. Mm -hmm. And so so this is play, this is this is at the heart of of Plantinga's discussion of evil that God can use evil and so God is not without his resources the evil isn't defeating God in fact God is using the evil and is and ultimately will defeat the evil um at at, at the at the uh, at the judgment seat uh, Absolutely that's very helpful it's amazing to think of um it's back in things in your life in our lives that we've experienced where they were definitely evil things that either happened to us or that we observed happening to others. And then later seeing the good that comes about that, we can see examples of this in action. Um, another thing that Plantinga talks about that I found especially fascinating was his explanation of why God allowed evil in the first place. Why did he allow it to um, Adam and Eve sin or Lucifer's sin, whichever you want to point to is the, uh -huh. um, the first sin. And, Correct me if I'm erring in my understanding, but one of his main points is that if God were to create truly free creatures and also creatures who are who are limited, they're not omniscient, they can't know the full ramifications of their decision. So Adam and Eve being our examples here, that truly free creatures will always eventually choose wrong. They, they can't, they're not omniscient, they, they're not don't have the holiness that God does, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So 
in people in that situation, God could not have created a universe where there are truly free creatures who don't sin because truly free creatures will always eventually sin. So what do you think of that argument and how does that help us in the, in the overall discussion? Well, I, I do think he's right. And uh, now freedom is a freedom is a, a big issue and, and controversial um, in Christian circles because we believe in God's providence and we believe in election and, and those sorts of things. But but I um, I think that uh, that is very important for us as Christians to affirm that um, that that we we can make choices that are that are that are up to us. I think that that God's providence cooperates with, or, or better, we we cooperate with God's providence, and so the things that we choose are within the the scope of His providence. And yet, when we sin, we are to blame. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think this is this is a strong biblical teaching. And uh, and and so we are to we are to blame, whether it's you know Adam and Eve, or um, or Jonah, or or Moses, uh, or Peter, right, or Judas, right. I think that the, the the reason that we as humans have freedom is is a really critical thing. Um, I love what Augustine, the great church father, uh, argued in some of his works. He he argued that that um, that evil is is one thing that makes us truly human. That God God in just deciding to make us, He made us with the ability to make choices. Not. We don't have absolute freedom. We can't just do anything we want. There are limits, and in in and God, I think, constrains us. And yet, there is there are things that are truly up to us. There are things that that are truly up to us, and and that's what makes us who we are. God has made us to love Him, but but we can we can only love Him. We can only truly love Him if it's also possible for us to hate Him. And God wants us to believe in Him, but we can only truly believe in Him if we can. Uh, not believe in him or blaspheme him. God wants us to repent, but we can only truly repent if we can also refuse to repent and, and so on. And there's there's a number of these things that God wants God wants us to worship him, but we can only worship him if we can also um, refuse to worship him. And so and so because love and faith and repentance and worship can't be it's it's not something that God can can just make us do. Like a like a like a puppet or or an an uh, an avatar on a on a you know computer program or something like that. No, we 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 ha- it's something we have to we it has to come from within us. It has to be genuine. It can't be it can't be forced. And so um, so Plantinga says, and I agree with him that there therefore there are some things that God God can't do. And one of the things that God can't do is He can't make free creatures who will definitely love Him. We have to, uh, we have, it has to be part of, of our choice. And because God gave us the ability to choose, therefore, we will choose the right and we will choose the wrong. And evil is in the world because, as Adam and Eve did, they chose the wrong. And we, we affirm their choice over and over in our lives every day. We choose the wrong. But we also, through the, through the help and guidance of the Spirit, choose what is good and we we believe and we repent and we have faith and we worship and, and therefore we can have a relationship with God. The, this free will defense, I think, is, is what is the most important Christian thought about the problem of evil. I think it explains why there's why evil is present in the world. And it also helps to explain what it means to be humans that God created. Uh, I remember when reading through planting his book, I think for the second time and when it finally clicked and the problem of evil has been something that I've wondered a lot about, thought a lot about, but didn't really have like a clear answer. I was like, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I was still at the point where, okay, God, I don't understand this, but I'm going to trust you. But reading Planet really helped me to get to the point that, okay, that makes sense. I mean, the way he explained it, again, it took me multiple times reading through it to put it together as points and all, all the formulas and so forth. But once it finally clicked, it was like, wow, that's actually really, really helpful. Now, um, obviously planting is not the first to come up with explanations throughout church history. There's been multiple theologians, philosophers explaining us. What are some of the other um, possible explanations for why God allows evil that you find to be helpful? 
good. Yeah, let me let me mention a couple a couple of big names in this that I think are really helpful. I, I mentioned Augustine already in his famous Confessions. If you've never read Confessions, you you really need to. It's one of the great books uh, in the world without qualification. Uh, it's a fascinating read of the story of his life and conversion, and in he talks about the problem of evil quite a bit in there. Um, C.S. Lewis, who is one of our great great Christian apologists and thinkers. His book, Mere Christianity, as well as his book, The Problem of Pain, The Screwtape Letters, The Great Divorce. These are all great reads as well, and um, and they have, a lot, uh, they have a lot in there about the problem of evil. I think that, um, so Augustine, C.S. Lewis, uh, Alvin Plantinga, um, uh, Don Carson, uh, one of our contemporary uh, theologians, has a book on the problem of evil that we read in class, John Stackhouse, uh, these are some, these are some some good good thoughts, good authors as well. Um, so the the free will defense, I think, is very important. The free will defense helps to explain that that freedom is part of the way, part of the reason that God made us is He He endowed us with freedom so that we can so that we can love Him and worship Him and obey Him. But that freedom means that we will um, we will use that to go wrong. Um, another uh, another uh, explanation or idea, some people call them theodicies. Um, mm-hmm is the greater good principle and this is what we were we were we were uh, touching on a little bit early earlier the greater good principle argues that um, that some things are necessary in order some some evils are necessary in order to produce some goods and um, there's a couple of classic verses that support this idea the first is is James chapter 1 James says Consider it all joy, brothers and sisters, when you encounter trials of various kind, because the testing of your faith produces maturity, perseverance, growth, um, and so on. And uh, and this uh, this very counterintuitive idea, nobody nobody is is excited for a trial. Oh, I got a flat tire! Yay! <laughs> no, we we you know we're not. But but James says, consider it all joy. Why? Because through these difficulties, um, we grow, we grow. And, 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 um, the other great, the other great verse is at the end of the book of Genesis, uh, Genesis 50, 20, uh, the long story of Joseph, which is one of the great stories in the Bible. And Joseph, who's a man of faith, who persevered through many difficult circumstances, being, um, sold into slavery, wrongfully imprisoned, falsely accused, and so on. Um, rose to a position of authority and used it used it to help um, you know survive a great famine and was reconciled to his family and his brothers fearing that he would take revenge on him came to him right um, and and Joseph said look what you did to me was wrong and you meant it to me as evil but God meant it for good uh, for the saving of many lives and and so 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 sometimes um, some of the evils that we experience, some of the suffering that we experience, can be um, can be used to produce um, greater goods or, or other goods. Anyway, um, I think it's very interesting that some of the some of the virtues that we um, that we prize can only come through difficulty. A great example is is patience, right? We all we all love people who are patient. We all want you know, the key people in our life to be more patient with us. You know, I wish my wife was more patient. Or I wish my kids were more patient. I wish my boss, I wish my, you know, fill in the blank was more patient with me. Patience is a good thing. But how do we get patience? Well, the King James Bible, which I grew up reading, usually says that patience is, is long suffering. We get patience by putting up with um things for a long period of time. You don't get, you don't get patience on a great vacation. You know, when the weather is perfect and the scenery is wonderful and the food is great and you're with your loved ones and everything is going, you know, that, that flies by, right? No, you get patience when you get stuck in an airport waiting to go someplace and delay, 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 or you get patience putting up with a boring job for months or years. You get patience, you know, listening to uh, long lectures in seminary or, or other sorts of things, right? That's how you get patience. Right, patience come. Patience is a good thing. Even God has patience, as Second Peter tells us. Patience comes through dealing with difficult circumstances. Um, I think we could say the same. Courage um, and 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 a maturity of all kind come through difficult kinds of things. And so, 
example, many times God uses difficulties to bring about um, uh, important um, positive blessings. Yeah, so excellent. I mean, what you said about um, patience, especially, rings with me. And that um, there's the old saying that don't pray for patience because typically God does that by bringing about difficult circumstances in which you have to be patient. So I don't think that's always true. Um, I've learned patience, thankfully, many times through observing other people going through trials. But um, it's true that um, the evil that we see in the world, the things that we experience that we didn't want, often ha have a powerful impact on us and teaching us things that we could really learn no other way. So if we were to since summarize um, part one of this problem of evil discussion is that God ultimately allowed evil because in order to have truly free creatures, there had to be the possibility of evil and that truly free creature creatures will always eventually choose wrongly. And that why does God continue to allow evil? It's for his purposes that God uses the evil to accomplish his will, to bring about growth in his people, to point people to the better life we'll experience in heaven and so many other reasons, but God uses evil to bring about a greater good that would not be possible were it not for evil. Is that a fairly accurate um, summary of our discussion so far? That's great. You nailed it. Yep. I think that's good. Okay. So um, this is, concludes part one of the discussion. In part two, we're going to discuss the problem of evil from a more practical standpoint. So. Um, Tune into that episode, which we'll be releasing soon. So I'm here with Dr. Timothy Yoder. Got questions? Bible has answers? We'll help you find them.